Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with a quick review of the DJI Mini 3 drone. In today's video, I'll give you five good reasons why I think you're going to fall in love with this particular drone. Now, DJI is a company that's released a wide range of different Mini drones over the years, all starting with their original Mavic Mini drone, which was the first sub-250 gram drone that included a lot of the features that you normally only found in larger, much more sophisticated drones into an airframe that weighed less than 250 grams. And it started a revolution on these smaller drones because before that, smaller drones like this weren't that sophisticated. They didn't fly real well. They weren't stable in the air. They had fixed cameras, which put a kind of a shaky picture together when you recorded things. They didn't fly very far and they weren't really sophisticated. So that original Mavic Mini had all the features that I cared about in my larger drones in a smaller airframe and it weighed less than 250 grams. Now the reason that's important is because a drone like this that weighs less than 250 grams means that in the United States, you don't have to register it with the FAA. And if you're flying it in another country, you won't have to worry about testing and insurance and all the other things that normally apply to a drone that's a little bit heavier. So having a drone that's lightweight not only makes it more portable, but it also eliminates all the need to get involved with that registration and all the things that brings into the picture. But again, you have to think of this as a small drone that really flies like a much larger drone, and I'll explain why. So the first thing I like about it is the size. Again, it's 250 grams. This one in particular is 243 grams, which means it's under that 250 gram limit. I don't have to worry about registering it. I can have a lot of fun flying it the day I buy it. Again, if you're flying it in another country, there's no testing to take or any of that stuff. So it's really important to understand that a light drone like this gives you all the benefits of a larger drone, but it's incredibly portable. So when I look at this drone, right now it's in its unfolded position. If I fold this up to put it away, the drone itself, once it's folded up, is small enough where it's actually about the same size as a can of soda. And here's the controller, and here are the batteries. So what you've got here is a package that I can slide into my backpack or I can throw in my suitcase when I'm going on vacation, and it's the ultimate portable drone, but it's got the sophisticated features that I care about, and I'll get into those next. The other thing that's really nice about it is because it's smaller, it's less noisy in the air, it's less noticeable in the air. So if you're flying around people or you're flying in an area that a lot of people care about, when you put this one up, it's whisper quiet up in the air. So nobody's going to notice it and start looking for the person flying it. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're out there flying. It's less annoying to wildlife as well. So if you're flying around birds, they're not going to get scared by it. So again, a smaller drone like this is wonderful from a portability and a flight perspective. The next thing you should care about is how long the drone flies. Because when you put a drone up, I can promise you, you're gonna to wanna to fly it as long as possible once it's up in the air. So what DJI did with this drone is improve the flight times on the drone. They actually offer two batteries for it. The smaller battery will fly for 38 minutes on a full charge. That's incredible to have a drone up in the air that long. The larger battery will give you 51 minutes of flight time. That's almost an hour of air time. And when you're flying the drone, you're gonna spend quite a bit of time getting out on target, making sure the framing is right, but having 51 minutes to get out, get on target, capture the footage you need, take some beautiful pictures, then get back to your home point, just gives you a lot of time. And honestly, I've flown a lot of drones that have 15 minutes, 20 minutes of flight time. So having 51 minutes on a full charge, you almost forget that it's up in the air. I mean, it's flying that long where you're thinking, I should be charging the battery. Why is it still up in the air? So that's a wonderful thing. It also allows you to fly a little bit further away and pay more attention to exactly the footage you want to capture. Because if you're limited on flight time to 20 minutes, you're really feeling rushed that you've got to get out on target. Maybe you took the shot, maybe you didn't. You've got to come back and swap out a battery. So knowing you can fly 38 minutes or 51 minutes means you're spending more time up in the air and less time on the ground changing out your batteries. The other thing you should care about is the imaging package, because the reason you bought a camera drone was to capture some incredible footage and take some beautiful pictures. Now, originally these uh, flying drones, the smaller drones like this, had really small imaging sensors on it, which did okay, it captured 1080p footage, and it did a good job capturing that level of uh, recording. But this drone has a larger sensor. It's a one over 1.3 inch sensor, which allows it to record 4K footage at 30 frames a second, 2.7K footage at 60 frames a second, and 1080p footage at 60 frames a second as well. So you've really got a DSLR camera up in the air in a tiny little drone. So when you put this up and you're recording some footage, you're gonna be blown away by how well this actually captures that footage and it takes some amazingly good pictures. So you've got a camera drone flying that gives you incredibly good image. You're not compromising on the image or the footage that you're recording up there in the sky. 
Another key feature is how far can you fly the drone because one of the concerns most new pilots have is when I have the drone up in the air and it flies way out over that lake and I lose connection, oh my gosh, that's a scary place. So this drone uses a proprietary DJI technology called OcuSync 2, which is a, wi a modified Wi-Fi technology, but it's enhanced and it can actually frequency hop so the drone and the controller are constantly having a conversation on connection. And if things get noisy because you've got Wi-Fi interference or you're near a power line or you've got a broadcast tower near you and the signal you're using to connect to the drone gets a little bit weak or it gets a little bit crowded, the drone and the controller know what the next best frequency are and they'll jump to that frequency. They'll jump again if they need to. They'll jump a third time. So there's constantly a conversation analyzing the connection strength between the controller and the drone and making whatever changes are needed to make sure you've got a rock solid connection with the drone. So because of that, that O2 technology allows you to fly this drone <laughs> up to 10 kilometers away. Now again, in the United States, we have a visual line of sight requirement where you've got to keep an eye on the drone. You can't really fly it further than you can see it. And you might be wondering, well, how would I care about the 10 kilometers? Well, knowing you've got that rock solid signal means you're not gonna to have to worry about breaking that signal if you're flying out over the lake or you're flying around some trees or a building. So rock solid connection back. It also delivers a 720p video feed back to your controller. So if you've got a phone or a tablet connected over here, you're seeing exactly what the drone sees in 720p uh, footage quality. So you're getting a great image back, you've got a rock solid connection, which means you can fly it out and not have to worry about it flying away. And the fifth thing, which I think is the most amazing feature this product provides, is the artificial intelligence and the automation built in. So the drone itself is constantly protecting you against things that might crash a normal drone. It's looking at the battery power. It's looking for problems inside the drone. If it sees the compass is off, the IMU has got issues, the battery's getting low, the drone will spring into action. It'll go into emergency mode and it'll instigate a return to home, which means it's gonna actually take over control of the flight it's gonna to elevate to whatever height you have set in the application. It's gonna spin around, face the home point, fly back on its own and land pretty much where it took off. So it's gonna protect you against some of the mistakes that you might make as a new pilot, like not watching your battery level. So the drone has got that protection built in. But in addition to that, they built in automated flight modes that you can actually instigate. They're called quick shots with the push of a button. So in the application, when you're flying near something that you want to capture some incredible footage of, you have a choice of different quick shots that you can select by pushing a button on the application, and the drone goes into automated flight mode where it'll actually circle an object and keep that object in the center of the frame. It'll fly away from the object, revealing the area behind it. It'll take a dramatic shot swooping in against that product. So essentially what you've got is a drone that can autonomously fly predetermined patterns and give you some incredibly good footage the day you bought the drone. So, I, I mean, you can get good with the controller and you can learn to fly it yourself, but knowing I've got automation built in that'll give me that perfect shot just by hitting a button just takes a lot of the pressure off and you can immediately take that and post that out to your social media site. So, again, it's hard for me to believe that DJI was able to pack all of those cool features into a drone that weighs less than 249 grams. It also handles the wind well. It's perfect in a level five wind, which is incredibly breezy up there. And that was another concern is that I've got a light drone, that wind is gonna blow it all over the place. Well, it can handle a level five wind, which means take it down the shore and fly it to your heart's content. So all those things make this an incredibly good drone. It's, again, it's got the features of a lot of the more sophisticated drones in a smaller package. So like I said before, it's a small drone that flies like a bigger drone and it's perfect for travel. So if you've never flown a drone before, take a good look at the Mini 3. I think this has all the features you'll care about in a drone that's easy to fly and it's got a lot of safety built in so you're not gonna have to worry about having any issues when you put it up in the air. So I like it an awful lot. I've been flying it since the day of release. I recommend it to all my friends and I think you're gonna like it an awful lot as well. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this quick review helpful and until next time, as always, <laughs> stay nerdy. Thank you.